Hi, welcome to Family and Fit, where we talk fitness and how to integrate it in your busy lifestyle. Today, we're going to be doing a video on a uh, on one of our main like bodybuilder uh, mills. This is a, a mill that we mill prep quite often. Matter of fact, we we used to do this mill so often, we literally always had at least one of them in our refrigerator at all times. Kind of a uh, kind of cut back on it here lately. I'm not really sure why, it just kind of happens. But, uh, yeah. So, this what this mill is, it's a turkey loaf, which essentially is a meat loaf uh, with some more healthy properties built into it. Whereas, like, meat loaf is generally made with a, like, hamburger meat, some people use crackers, some people use oatmeal, um, things along those lines. Well, we've kind of changed it up and they changed the ingredients in there to make it healthier, leaner, uh, and just all over a, a better mill, a better uh, alternative for you know people who are trying to stay in shape and uh, and trying to reach goals in the in the fitness uh, field and industry. So. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start by kind of explaining what I got here, and I'm gonna throw it all together. I, I went ahead and did this like a uh, like a cooking show and pre-measured everything out. I'll let you know what uh, what is in everything, and then I'll probably link it down in the description as well. All the different ingredients I use. Now, all of this stuff here can be substituted with other things. Uh, it's kind of up to you uh, whether you want to uh, use the exact same things as I do or not. Uh, so I'm going to start off with turkey. We use turkey meat as the, uh, the main ingredient. And a major thing to look at with the turkey meat that you get is that you get a 93% lean. Um, if you do not get the 93% lean, then uh, it's going to really throw off the macros and, and this meal is not near as uh, lean and, and, and able to help you lose fat and gain muscle, which is the primary purpose of this meal, along with uh, being able to meal prep it and cook a, a huge batch of it and have, uh, have it for days or maybe for a week. Uh, second thing we got here is red onion. We got some red onion here. You can use yellow onion, white onion, don't really matter. All the same deal they own. This right here is a, a mix of grains. Uh, the grains that we've used, I'm going to come over here, I'll uh, show you what all we got. It's not all grains, let me take that back. Because uh, we also use cheese seeds. I used a quarter cup of cheese seeds, a quarter cup of flax seeds, a half a cup of these uh, super grains, which they got buckwheat, millet, uh, red quana, and white quana in it, and then uh, a half a cup of these international super grains. And uh, it's got uh, brown jasmine rice, farro wheat, and red quana. There's actually another half a cup of uh, oatmeal, whole grown oats, that I'm going to add to this as well. Uh, it just wouldn't all fit in this uh, canister right here. Like I said, I pre-measured everything out. I got a, a quarter cup of olive oil. Just to kind of uh, add a little bit extra fats to it. I like to add healthy fats to to the mills and whatnot. And uh, we got regular mushrooms right here, along with. Uh, uh, portobello mushrooms, sorry. We got portobello mushrooms here. And then we got a caked up chicken seasoning. You could also use the uh, kicking, kicking chicken uh, seasoning from Weber. That one should be a pretty easy one to find. You can use whatever uh, seasoning you want. Uh, this is just my preference because I love the flavor of these. Actually, I've never used this one. I've used the kicking chicken. We're going to give this one a shot today. Uh, another thing that we've got here is Worcestershire sauce. I grabbed two different Worcestershire sauce today. These, this one was double the price of this one, but this is supposed to be like more natural and whatnot. So I'm gonna do a kind of a taste test on these and see which one is uh, is better. 
Now, generally, this meal is uh, is cooked and then is topped with uh, ketchup, just like regular meatloaf is. Today, we're gonna switch it up. Normally, we do the, the ketchup thing as well, but today we're gonna switch it up and we're gonna use this Parmesan garlic wing sauce. Uh, this sauce is freaking good. We've had it with some other things before. The macros aren't too great on it. It's 50 calories per tablespoon, but with the amount of protein and uh, and the lack of carbs and whatnot, it's not that big of a deal. Quit, baby. We're shooting a video, okay? Um, Go. Yeah, so I'll primarily use this seasoning. I'll probably add a little bit of salt, maybe some Tony Catchers to it, and uh, some black pepper as well. We'll add that in. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and stop it. Okay, go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and mix all these ingredients together. Uh, I'm gonna start off by taking a couple of these, uh, these are pounds. Oh, this one's actually uh, 1.2 pounds. The ones we generally get are uh, one pound each, which that's fine, it's not that big of a deal. Just more protein for the gains, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ain't nothing wrong with getting a little bit extra gains up in the, in the game. You know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and drop stuff. I'm trying to make this fast. I don't want to waste anybody's time. I know everybody's time is very valuable. Uh, so I'm just gonna roll out with it and just keep going. So that's two. That's two. I'm gonna call them pounds. Uh, even though they're 1.2 pounds each, I'm gonna go. So I've got two pounds in there right now. I'm gonna go ahead and toss in some of the onions. And then toss in just a little bit of the grains that I've had uh, pre mixed up. And I'm just doing this right here so that I don't have to mix this as much by hand. I'll still have to mix it up by hand very well, but the more meat you stack up and uh, whatnot, the harder it's going to be. If you want to go ahead and come over and take a little look at it. Take a look inside there and see what you see. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to add just a little bit of everything, a little bit of the seasoning. I'm going to use this whole thing of seasoning. And to be honest, like you can use way more than just this one season. That's probably really one of the most expensive things here. Sorry for all the background noise. We're just, uh, you know, trying to make this thing happen. We're trying to do this thing on limited time. Uh, I hope y'all are okay with the quality. Uh, I apologize, but hopefully the content is good enough that it's not that big of a deal. Adds a ton of catches. I'm not even really counting looking any of that. I just know. I can kind of just. I've been cooking for long enough. I've loved cooking since I was, you know, a young, young cat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit of uh, Warshire up in there. Put a little bit of the other Warshire. They Why are you tasting it for? Yeah, these Warshires taste a lot different from each other. I don't know which one's better. I think we can probably go with the non-natural one and uh, save a little bit of money, probably. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in two more thing, two more pounds of uh, of turkey meat. Also, don't let that go in there with it. <laughs> you probably don't want to eat that. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. You'll get salmonella. Uh, by the way, I'm not responsible for any salmonella or any crazy like things that might occur. Cut yourself with a knife. I'm not responsible for any of that. Just want to let y'all know up front. All right. So I'm gonna throw in a second thing of uh, turkey meat. Oh. Drop it in there, man. Drop it in there. Uh. That's gross. I hate touching chicken meat, turkey meat, any of that. It's disgusting. Now I'm going to die of salmonella. Hope I get this video out before I die. Okay, let's add some more of this and that. Tony Catchers. Add some more of that seasoning. God, it looks like so much. It'll be okay though. It really does seem like a lot, but when you really when you get to mixing this stuff in, it like mashes into the meat, you're like. This is going to take a while to mix this up. We'll go ahead and 
I'll probably go ahead and cut out this part of the video, I think. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, I, I want y'all to get a real-time view of uh, what this uh, process takes. And, uh, yeah. So I'm going to keep mashing together. Also, the size of the onions that you cut, the mushrooms that you cut, that's going to be based on your consistency. If you like big chunks of mushrooms in your stuff or you don't like mushrooms, don't put mushrooms in it. Cut your mushrooms up smaller. These are all factors that you can change of the recipe. And one thing I like about this, it's so simple, it's so easy to modify things and, and switch it up to your likings. Like I've made this uh, turkey loaf for people at work a couple times that didn't like mushrooms, or they didn't like onions. Oh no. Oh, that's edible. No. I didn't realize another one of those went in there. Oh well. It's edible now. Yeah. good mix keep on mixing her I wouldn't suggest using a blender for this just because you might like pulverize the onions and mushrooms and there'll be no consistency left um, we'll probably get to a point where this is pretty good if you want to go over and take a look at it again so let me kind of see that's what the consistency looks like you can't even hardly tell there's carbs in there I mean that looks like just like proteins all protein. Look at that. I mean, there's you can see the carbs in there, some onions in there, but like for the amount that we had in there, you can't hardly tell at all. It's still so high in protein. I'll link the uh, the macros in the bottom uh, in the, in the uh, description section. So you know, and, and and if you modify this, it's going to change the macros. You know, that is what it is. But. I can modify this, because this is such a high protein dense uh, meal right here, I can up the carbs and the fats just a little bit, and I don't really got to even worry about tracking that, I don't, I do more of an intuitive type of eating, I don't track every single macro, I just, uh, you know, I, I try to consume a high amount of protein, I probably consume more protein than what your general person does, but I set a high goal, and I don't always reach my goal, so, you know, I might shoot for like 200 grams of protein a day, but, you know, I might, in actuality, only hit 150, but I know if I hit 150 grams of protein a day, and by telling, by each meal I eat, I know whether I'm overeating or not, to whether I need to cut back a little bit, or I need to eat a little bit more, depending on whether I want to cut or bulk. Uh, yeah, so I was gonna wash my hands, but there ain't no point in it. I'm just going to come over here. That's so hot. We just use these pants to cook our chicken for a minute ago, so it's so hot. Alright, alright, alright. Let's come over here and hit up this, uh, boom, coconut oil. This is a coconut oil spray. You can use olive oil spray. Whatever spray you want. I'm just doing this so that it don't stick. Also, I generally use a glass pan. Uh, our glass pans just happen to be dirty right now, so you gotta do what you gotta do, right? And uh, so we're just gonna take it over here and kind of just smack it on. Smack it all right in the center because it's gonna want to push out. I keep smacking in the center, keep smacking in the center. <laughs> Smack it. Just like this. Watch. You gotta watch it. You might even put this in slow mo. Smack it in the center. Boom. Right here. We're gonna put that in slow mo. This is like this. Alright. So. Alright. Look at that. Look at how big this is. That's only half of it. Look how massive this pan. I mean, this is what. This is like a 12 by 10 pan or something like that. Ridiculously big. So, here we go. I don't know if you know or not. I, I don't believe I've mentioned this yet, but when you go to cook this turkey loaf, you don't add your topping to it because of such a long cook time. I can't remember if you do that with regular meatloaf or not, but uh, we generally let this cook for almost the full two hours. 
take it out, add the, the topping to it, and then we throw it back in. Uh, throw it back in for like 20 minutes to get the, the top, like um, solidify it a little bit to give it a little, oh, that's heavy. This is a mess. I gotta clean this mess up still. We'll spray it off the second pan. Essentially the same thing. I'd much rather use the glass pans. Uh, for the main reason is that uh, I'm gonna have to put water in these pans a little bit to uh, absorb into the meatloaf, turkey loaf, as, as it cooks. Because the, if I added as much water directly into this loaf as that was needed for the rice, it would be slush and I wouldn't be able to form it. So what you got to do is you got to put, you know, like two cups of water, whatever it is, two cups of water in here. And then, uh, and then you'll add a little bit of water to the side. With the glass pans, you definitely want to add the water in before you put it in the oven. Because if not, your glass pan will bust. We've learned from experience. Uh, so essentially like this. I'm going to go ahead and do it this way too. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I forget and I'm like, oh crap. But So yeah, just add a little bit of water around it. And, and what will happen is as that rice starts to cook and suck up all the water from below, it will start to suck up the water around it as well. You don't want to submerge the loaf at all. Like maybe a third of, fill it up, a third of the height of the loaf, if that. Like this probably ain't even nowhere near that. As I mentioned before, we'll cook this at uh, 200 degrees for about two hours. The nice thing about this is you don't really got to worry about overcooking it. You can still overcook it, but you know it's the it'd be like a whole extra hour of overcooking it for it to to like be burnt or start to get like a tough skin on the outside or anything like that. And then a lot of times you can still fix that with water. This this mill is so easy. That's one thing I love about it is like. You can mess up on it and you can correct it in so many different ways. Um, this recipe also is a little bit lower on the carbs and fats than what I generally do. I generally probably almost do double of what I did in this recipe you've seen here. And that's just because I want to get more protein in. I want to change the macros up on the, uh, on the mill. I want to make sure I'm getting enough protein. Because I tend to overeat this a lot. It's so freaking good. So I'm just making sure if I'm overeating, I'm at least overeating on protein and not uh, not carbs and fats, because uh, you know those tend to go to your belly a little bit easier than the protein does. I think protein has a higher likelihood of being able to uh, being able to uh, basically come out the other end, you know. It doesn't necessarily always go directly to your stomach. I think that your body kind of rejects some of the proteins that you're not using. Um, Alright, so we're going to go ahead and close her up. Set the oven to 200. And uh, maybe 225. 225. And you can always do stuff like maybe 250 for 15, 20 minutes. Drop it down to 225. 200 to just kind of heat your oven up a little bit faster and get it up to temp and uh, It'll help with uh, cutting down on some of the cook time if you're trying to make this happen a little faster I definitely do tricks like that Sometimes I'll even bump it up like 400 for like 10 minutes and then I'll bump it back down to 200 Just to really ramp up the speed really quick especially newer ovens. They have uh, controls in them that as they get closer to the temperature they start to uh, all right, so here we back are this morning. Uh, we kind of uh, 
forgot this turkey yeah. roast in the oven. Hold on, baby. I need your hush. I'm shooting a video, okay? Um, so, we ended up falling asleep last night on the turkey loaves and woke up an hour or two uh, past when they were supposed to come out of the oven. And, uh, yeah, that tends to happen a lot. I think that's why we haven't been cooking this meal as much uh, here lately. Because we end up uh, prepping this meal, like, super late at night. We put it in the oven. We start watching a movie. We fall asleep. So that's kind of been an issue and with wasting food and whatnot. And sometimes we don't wake up an hour or two later. We don't wake up till the next morning, and they're pretty much a crispy critter. Uh, as, I, as I said earlier in the video, <clears throat> that we're going to go with this Parmesan garlic wing sauce um, versus using ketchup. This uh, Parmesan garlic wing sauce is 50 calories per tablespoon, which is three-fifths or a little over half of, uh, or a little over double the amount of calories that is in ketchup. So, um, I kind of want to use this a little bit more sparingly. And then also, I, uh, I cut back on some of the carbs that are actually in the loaf. I, I put a little bit less rice and oatmeal and, uh, and some of the fats. Like, I, I generally use more of these, more of these chia seeds right here. A little bit more of the flax seeds. I cut back on all that stuff that way to kind of uh, counterbalance the extra fat calories that are in this and the extra uh, carbs that are in this. This is really fat heavy. It's got five grams of fat and uh, two grams of carbs. I actually thought this would be a lot higher in carbs. I was really surprised to see how much fat content it had. As you're gonna see right here, this stuff is like super duper thick. Like here it is, bottle upside down. It's not wanting to come out. And because it's so thick like that, Emma, I'm Emma. gonna end up adding some water. Hey, I'm shooting a video. You see that, right? By the way, if y'all are watching along, you see, you see me shooting these videos and whatnot. Uh, you're probably gonna get a little bit of parenting along with it because my kids are yahoos, but I feel like I'm a pretty solid parent. Just leave this stuff. I mean, it's still. Coming out. <coughs> I'm like shaking and shaking and shaking with stuff. Okay. So that's probably about half the bottle right there. What I'm going to add some water to it. Oh, it's not, it's not it's water. So we got to get this stuff a little bit, while you're cutting it, so you're, you're not using as much calories for the area that you're using. Oh, yeah, this is a fat, not a carb. It's not going to mix very well. I forgot about that guy, sorry. I think I just run this. Oh well. Alright. So it's not mixing very well. I forgot. It's a fat and a carb. Water, water doesn't mix with fats very well. If it was a carb, it would have mixed a lot better. But, so that's super runny. This thing can really work out. But I'm going to go ahead and put a layer on. Let's go ahead and layer it on. So I guess I'll put a little bit more in this, and uh, just a little bit though. It's like a shot. Uh, water acts completely different, completely different with uh, fats than it does carbs. If that would have been carbs, that would have turned out perfect. Whereas you can see, if you look closely in this, there's uh, a lot of chunky stuff in there because it doesn't really, it doesn't mix with water. It actually stays separate. thing that I do while I'm doing these is I put all the sauce like in the center that way uh, as it cooks it'll kind of spread down or if you put too much in the center it'll spread down whereas if you put a bunch on the sides and you actually put too much on the sides it's going to run off into the pan. So like I said I'm going to kind of be a little bit more sparingly with this sauce here mainly because the, cal the uh, calorie intake on it is pretty freaking high. Almost kind of like destroys this bill because this is I think like uh hold on let me think uh oh, that's a lot of freaking calories 
it's like almost it's like a thousand some calories for this one bottle. So that's like what people don't realize about like sauces and stuff like that. Here's a thousand calories in this bottle, which added to this this meal here, you know, jumped up every serving of this meal by like probably twenty five calories at least. So you gotta really watch out for stuff like that. Especially with fats. Fats tend to fats tend to have a lot uh a lot more calories. They, they're, uh, I think they're like nine calories per gram of fat, whereas they carbs like four. Um, yeah, I really need to put a little more sauce on these. I think I will. I really don't want to. I'm dreading this, but hey. We'll just spread it out a little bit better. I'm scared I'm gonna add too much, like the whole bottle's gonna drop out on me. Okay, I think I can make that work. Get a little bit more here. This should be pretty fire. Like I said, this is a wing sauce, so it's designed, it's designed for wings. So, and this is turkey, so that's pretty much a wing, man. Pretty much a wing. So we'll get her back in the oven. We'll probably uh, put her back in the oven at about, I think this one will do at a high temperature because we're just looking at brown in the top of this and really uh, solidifying the uh, the sauce here. Really want to uh, just solidify this sauce and get it kind of like a, a thicker pasty, almost the consistency it was whenever it came out of the bottle. But then you want to also add not necessarily a brownness to it because I think this stuff here will burn if I'm not mistaken. It won't really brown. So we're just going to let it kind of also soak in with the top layer of the loaf. Some of that flavoring will soak in. This is really freaking good. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of water to the pans again as well. Just to uh, just to ensure that these things don't dry out. And also the fact that they've had extra time in the oven last night. They're probably already a little bit dry. The big one looks perfectly fine as far as like being dry and whatnot. The, the small one, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit on, more on the crispy side. Whereas the other one's perfectly fine, nothing wrong with it at all. It won't be too dry, it'll probably be perfect. It won't have any like crunchiness from the rice or anything like that. That's a uh, was the major hurdle when we first started making this meal. Is being that we were putting rice in it and non-cooked rice was cooking the loaf long enough at the right temperature to be able to ha give the rice time to soften and become tender. All right. By the way, with these little thin pans, you may not want to add the water prior to because it's going to uh, cause issues. Another thing, another uh, little tip. I'm going to go ahead and boost it up to like 500. I'm not going to cook it at 500. I'm boosting it up to 500 because it'll help get the oven a little, uh, hotter, faster, especially on newer ovens. This old oven probably doesn't have the technology that a new, new oven does. But we'll get that boosted up. You want to turn this temperature up before you put this stuff in here because you really don't want this bottom burner kicking on a lot. Because if you get this bottom burner kicking on a lot, you're going to start getting the bottom of your loaf uh, burnt. So you may have like burn on the bottom. Like say for instance, you just turned the oven on, you just threw these in there for the two hour long cook, you're gonna probably burn the bottom of your loaf and it's gonna be hard to get off the bottom and it's not gonna be edible. We've done it before, we've made these mistakes. And that's why we're shooting this video because we really like this meal. There's a lot of trial and error in it because like I've never heard of anybody cooking a, a turkey loaf, meat loaf with, with hard non-cooked rice and, and whole road oats and these different uh, like kuana or however you pronounce that stuff. You know, I don't. I just generally don't see people uh, using these type of ingredients within this recipe. So it was definitely a little learning curve um, that we had to overcome. And it's a nice, solid meal prep meal that I essentially just do not get tired of. If I can like rotate between this Parmesan uh, sauce right here, ketchup, and hold on, I'll show you. I'll bring you one more thing. This sauce right here, this uh, Asian kick and wing sauce. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to do it. I think I'm going to put this on the small one. I'm going to have to do it. Alright. So, yeah, this sauce right here is just fire. 
I, uh, it's, it's calories are, the funny thing is, is I like this one even better in the calories. It's got 10 less calories per uh, tablespoon in here. So it's actually a little bit healthier. I really wish I wouldn't have put anything on this one. I would have just put this one. But hey, oh well. This has got like a, it's kind of like um, chili sauce. It tastes a lot like chili sauce, like the McDonald's chili sauce they used to have, or sweet chili sauce or whatever it was. Um, this is a lot of what this tastes like. It's also made by the same person as the Parmesan stuff. It's a wing sauce as well. So it's, it's purposed for this pretty much exact thing right here. So boom, we'll just throw a little bit on there. I love this stuff. Does it taste good? It's good. <laughs> this one's got way too much stuff on top of it. This is going to taste good. Be a bad macro one. Hopefully some of them extra color can slide off the top of the pan when it's cooking. Heck yeah. That's like something. Malika. <laughs> Alright, so. We're going to go ahead and throw these uh, bad boys back in the oven. Here in a couple minutes. I'm not going to throw them in just yet. Although I'm in here in a couple minutes, whenever my little indicator lights tells me we hit 500, I might turn it down here in a second. I'll turn it down to probably more like 400. We'll cook these bad boys for like 5-10 minutes at 400 just to give it a nice like consistency on the top. And then uh, we'll bring it back out and we'll show you what they look like when they're done. Alright, finally got the finished product. I almost went ahead and ate this stuff and Tupperware it up. And... Uh, didn't show y'all the finished product, but when I opened up the oven, I was like, okay, I got to, because it looks pretty solid. Go ahead and uh, give a view of what this looks like. Keep it slow. Come back a little bit off of it. Yeah, look at that. All right. It's looking super fire. I didn't think it was going to look this good, uh, just, uh, just putting it in the oven. It, it gave it a nice dark texture, and, uh, we'll give this thing a try. See what we think here. Yeah, pretty good. Can't really be. Come on, camera woman. Come try this. Mm hmm. It's good. She's really enthused. That's why she's not in front of the camera. And she's not going to be a videographer for long. Be finding a replacement. Oh, let me know if you're a videographer in the Evansville, Indiana area. I'm going to be looking for some, some type of. Uh, Partnership, maybe do some bloggy stuff. Have somebody with a decent camera. Sorry, camera following us around and whatnot. We're gonna need that. Also, if you like this video, if you want more like it, just let us know. We got other tips, other uh, mills that are somewhat like this that we love to do. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to put out the content that I think everybody will like. Mm -hmm. Sounds better. Mm -hmm. Yep. That one tastes a little bit more salty or something. I don't know. They uh, they could have used a little bit more salt. It's so hard to judge with this because it takes so much seasoning that you really need to measure it out, especially with uh, the salts and like your seasoning that you use because um, it can easily be bland. Like you could put like, if, if I would have used a half of the bottle, if I would have used half of one of these bottles, this meal would have been pretty bland. Uh, and it could have used even more. It could have used probably another half a bottle. I used a full bottle, probably could have used another half a bottle. Uh, but it tastes pretty freaking solid. We're gonna go ahead and get this Tupperware up 
And uh, if y'all liked it, hit the like button just so that we know to continue to do these videos. Put something down in the comments. Uh, if you try this mill, let us know. If you have anything that's kind of like it, uh, kind of bring it to the table and, and let us uh, see what your recipe is. Maybe we'll try it out and uh, put it on uh, YouTube. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And y'all have a great day.